Hi friends, welcome back to Cryptonomics. Today I have a very special episode for you today. You beautiful, curious souls will find out why Coinbase is 70% of my equity portfolio. I will go line by line on their revenue streams and their expenses and show you how I've calculated their Q4 revenue and why I think they will turn profitable in Q4 and going forward in 2024 and 2025, currently worth $40 billion. Coinbase can easily double from here and 5x in the next year or two. All right, let's jump into it. Let's look at the sources of revenue for Coinbase. First of all, their transaction-based revenue. This is just consumers using their platform and paying a fee per trade. As prices of crypto go up, this number will go up as well. Since crypto has almost doubled since this report, we can expect this number to almost double in Q4. Now, institutions are an interesting revenue source along with custodial fees. Both of these will not change drastically in Q4, the next earnings report, but might be very substantial in Q1. If the spot Bitcoin ETFs get approved, since Coinbase is custodian of 9 out of 10 of these ETF institutions and custodial fee numbers might go up drastically. An interesting line item of the revenue is stablecoins. Stablecoins are USDC coin that Coinbase, in partnership with a company named Circle, they create a digital dollar that is stable and backed by dollar-based assets like U.S. Treasuries that holds its value relative to the U.S. dollar one-to-one. -one. You can always trade one for the other. But when your dollar is in a digital form, now you can participate in the blockchain system. You can send that dollar around the world for very low fees 24-7. If you're using crypto, you can send it anywhere in the world, any time of day, within seconds, for a very, very minuscule fee relative to how much banks charge for a wire transfer, for example. So this is a great tool for remittances, for international payments, and a great revenue source for Coinbase. It is also a great stabilizer of revenue, pun intended, because when interest rates are high, Coinbase will make more revenue from this revenue line item. When interest rates are high, tech companies usually lose revenue. As we saw, Coinbase got hurt as interest rates went up because it's a tech stock, tech company. And when interest rates are high, usually the tech sector suffers. But in this case, what Coinbase has innovated through their partnership with Circle is when interest rates are high, they actually have a whole new item that makes more revenue in that scenario. So when interest rates go down, this will be reduced in revenue unless the number of stable coins being created or demand for them grows to offset the reduction in the interest rate. If interest rates go down, usually assets like crypto go up in value. When interest rates are low, more money is being created. And when more money is chasing the same amount of assets, those assets appreciate. We're really excited about this new way to stabilize revenue so that Coinbase is making money whether there's a bull or a bear market. Next one is blockchain rewards. Coinbase offers a service to its customers where they facilitate validating blockchains such as Ethereum where they provide the validator services and customers provide their Ethereum as the collateral to be staked. Stakers or validators earn interest or staking rewards from the Ethereum blockchain for providing the service and security of validating blocks and providing security. Ethereum right now provides about a 4% interest to this is a great revenue source for Coinbase because they take a 25% cut of the rewards that they help their customers generate. This is the highest take rate in the industry, and yet they have a large amount of people that are staking with them because they have over 100 million customers, and it's literally one click to start earning money with your Ethereum and help secure the blockchain. This might also go up, especially if the Ethereum spot ETF has a staking mechanism also built into it. 
all these institutions they may, may want to purchase ethereum as part of their etf might also want to earn income from the staking rewards which is additional four percent in crypto this is known as the internet bond yield because ethereum is almost a internet bond when it comes to staking rewards those are the great new sources of income for coinbase looking at their expenses it's technology development, it is general admin, it is transactions, sales and marketing, and at the end of it all, they had an operating loss in Q3 of $80 million. Reading their shareholders letter for Q3, Coinbase plans to keep these expenses in line to what they were in, in Q3 going into Q4. They seem to have kept their word from Q2 to Q3 on this matter. So we can give them a level of trust that they will keep these expenses. That means they don't plan to hire more or advertise more or spend more in developing new technology that they have in previous quarters. So they don't have new initiatives that will add to the expenses. So if their expenses remain the same, but their revenue, let's say doubles, that means that they will actually turn profitable in Q4. And then this will garner more attention from institutional investors and people who thought that Coinbase is not a profitable company that's just losing money. Once they turn the corner and they're printing money, let's say, in, a, in the essence of just making lots of money for doing a great job because it's a software business, then we can expect valuations to also increase. Right now, Coinbase is valued at 40 billion we can assume that a return to revenue of 2021 which was about seven billion dollars in 2021 a 10x multiple will make it about a 70 or 80 billion dollar company which means the current share price would double from here from almost 200 to 400 if we they just return to 2021 numbers we expect crypto to actually go up in value orders of magnitude from the previous all-time highs therefore coinbase revenue as well especially since their co large competitor ftx has been shut down because of their fraud and embezzlement now coinbase is the only company standing that is trusted universally in crypto they're the oldest exchange with the most trust it's never been hacked and now every institution or nine out of 10 institutions that are starting a, a Bitcoin ETF are choosing to use Coinbase as a custodian. As crypto grows in its market value, the overall pie grows and Coinbase will reap the benefits as a larger piece of that pie as a lot of its competitors have gone out of business that were competitors back in 2021. If they made $7 billion in 21, we can assume that they will make maybe double that, if not more, if crypto prices double from here, then their valuation can be as much as 200 billion, maybe more. Giving it a 5x multiple from here, from the current 174, let's say $200 range, we can see the price of Coinbase shares go up to 800 to 1,000 by end of 2024, maybe end of 2025, depending how long it takes the crypto market and the institutions to really adopt this. So that is why Coinbase is one of our biggest positions, not one of the biggest position after Ethereum. We have positive expectations for the future, especially as the ETFs look like they will be approved by the regulators in the US within 10 days from now. If that does happen, a lot of the Coinbase investment risk will be taken off the table and it will seem like a much safer company to invest in that it has a blessing from the regulators with the spot ETF being launched in the US. Now, what we are really excited about is Coinbase Derivatives Exchange that was launched recently outside of the United States. Derivatives usually make up a much larger transaction volume than spot. And in, in traditional markets, derivatives make up the biggest part of all assets. Other thing that we're excited about is USDC partnership, 
with Circle. As we mentioned, this is a new revenue item that benefits from high interest rates that will stabilize revenue. And then lastly, Coinbase launched their L2 called Base. This is a layer two roll up on Ethereum that Coinbase owns and generates revenue from. So these are new sources of revenue that are likely to grow in the future. One we're mostly excited about is the derivatives because that can be substantial in the short term as well as long term. And long term, we think having a layer two solution that is decentralized, uh, Web3 is a protection as a centralized exchange to have their foot in a decentralized world. These are our projections of how we expect the revenue to be different. This is Q3, a chart made by our friends of App Economy Insights that dissects each revenue source in blue on the left and each expense in red on the right. We believe that the transaction-based revenue will almost double from 289 to 505 and that the blockchain rewards will go from 75 to 100, which will impact the total revenue from 674 to 915, a 35% increase from last quarter. Expenses will stay about the same, a slight increase of 4%, which, if all these numbers are true, will imply that there will be an operating profit of $128 million for Coinbase just to start Q4. Q1, if everything stays on trend, should be even greater than this and going towards similar numbers we saw in 2021, perhaps greater, since Coinbase has fewer competitors left in the market to compete against. Coinbase is the oldest, most trusted crypto exchange in the U.S. And as we saw, many of their competitors go out of business, go bankrupt, or just flat, flat out commit fraud, Coinbase is left standing and with the ability to capture a greater piece of the pie. Well, there you have it. That is why Coinbase is my number one position in my portfolio. My allocation is 70%, both in shares and some options. You may call it irresponsibly long. I call it overly focused with a concentration in something I have high conviction and a big edge in. If you want to stay up on the latest crypto and stock news, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Until next time, may the power of compound interest be with you. Peace.